Hey everybody, I'm talking to those in the born again community, the saints, those that serve in the body of Christ and leaders and ministers. I myself am one, but I'm not under the back hard old country law and that's what we're talking about. We're trying to stir it up, really shake it up, more like out of respect and safety for the new visitor, the teamwork of the body of Christ. We're talking on submission one of the favorite doctrines that I never knew existed in such magnum, magna, fortitude, and stir out in the field where they uh, are ripe for harvest and they're also in the big boss league. So I'm teaching submission. I'm going to have a really longer one on YouTube. This is just a wet the whistle of discovery of Ephesians 5.21 gone awry. You know, back in the day, I never, you know, I had such a mild-mannered and respectful, genteel authority in my family of pastors, ministers, business people who chose to follow Christ, sort of like the Billy Graham, not Bible-thumping, but sober, honest, in the fear of the Lord. And as I've said before on another part, I was raised in hindsight. Nobody had to teach me, you know, nobody taught me this, but officially I look back at the fruit of Christians that remains. It was Ephesians 5.21 with the wives cheerfully, capably submitted in 5.22, but it was really this part that's left out in the ministry where misogyny is. You know, I guess I just never knew it because I was raised so respectfully. People were not racist. They were not accusers. They were not biased. They were not prejudiced. I never saw that in my grandparents, their parents, my parents, aunts and uncles. It was just common respect. So I never heard of anyone being accused, little woman, thou shalt not kept a prisoner under the law. It was like, hey, it's Ephesians 5.21. In hindsight, nobody told me. Nobody lectured me. They didn't need to. It was mutual submission in the fear of the Lord. That's the big deal. The body of Christ, the team, the family, the minister, the person, the pioneer, mutual submission in the fear of the Lord. What does that mean? First of all, you have to really respect other people. You're other-centric. You are deferring, you study the boundaries. If you're a leader like I am and I go to visit a church, a house, a business, any person, believer, non-believer, just in society, go to a restaurant, you survey the boundaries, you look around who's there, what's in order, and you observe the boundaries. You're submitted in James 3.17 fruit, the wisdom from above, which is first of all pure, peaceable, easily entreated, full of mercy and good fruit without partiality. And this crowd, this crop, this giant cream of the crop crowd, if they want to be, are people pleasers because they don't know basic common scripture and decorum, modest decorum, mutual submission in the fear of the Lord, respecting, reading the boundaries, when you're their guest, when you're not in charge, when they're not over, you know, you're not under them, and you're not over them, you are over them, that's different. But we're talking about mutual submission in the fear of the Lord. You respect everybody, you're courteous. So that would go in the fear of the Lord. That means you have to have a common holy fear, understanding of your purpose. You're a servant leader, you're here for others, you're here to represent Christ. You walk it out behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, in family, in life. You're not word cursing, not violent, you're not depraved, <laughs> you're not toxic, you're really even keel and respectful and you forgive everybody you're not uh you don't have any stereotypes black by you know i didn't know this but i didn't because i never dreamed this would i never occurred that in christian ministry that god would want me to be the stereotype that triggers racism accusation really racism which is misogyny in the christ this kinds of christian ministry. it's been charismatic prophetic charismatic my color not one single African-American, dark-skinned, Vietnamese, anybody that I know, even denominational white, black, or brown, Catholic, nobody has ever done this except one kind, and that is when I was drawn to study, surf, and understand the body of Christ that moves in the spirit, the charismatics. And I didn't realize that I stir up what this must be misogynist stereotyping back to Eli and all these things is stereotyping under the law. I trigger it, whatever's on my vibe and my nature. And see, my vibe is very diverse, racially diverse. I get along. I have a celebratory 
celebratory party animal of the Holy Spirit, that is. But I'm very calm. I'm very supernatural, but I try not to be super spiritual. I'm very approachable. I try to live my life in James 3.17 fruit. Why? Because that's how you're supposed to do it if you're a real Christian. It takes God's strength, and you practice it to get better. But you try to check your heart when you're with anybody, with your relatives and yourself. Are you really modeling what the Bible says in James 3.17, the wisdom from on high, that is first of all how? Pure, peaceable, easily entreated, that means respectful, full of mercy and good fruits, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, meekness, goodness, self-control. That's Galatians 5.22, so all that. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, meekness, self-control. It says, the wisdom from above is pure, peaceable, easily entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality. It respects everybody. It doesn't have the big eye, little eye, uh, we only like your style, respect your persons. It doesn't toy with people. It doesn't play games, monkey business. All right, and then last of all, the wisdom from above is no hypocrites without hypocrisy, not playing games, not saying, oh, I love you and I respect you, we're so glad you're here, I value you, but then talking against them, praying against them, doing all this weird stuff, despising, not respecting, but demeaning stuff in a Christian sense, really. So we are pro all people, we're pro the common man, not the celebrity, not the have to be over everybody, that kind of preacher, it's the fruit not the people. I respect the people. I can get along. I can agape love the people. But it's got to be different if you're going to have Jesus Christ in a community. If you're going to be Ephesians 4, the community that walks it out in meekness and lowliness and long suffering that is transformed, knowing that everyone's following God's whole counsel to be a witness. Why? Because Ephesians 5, excuse me, Ephesians 5.21, mutual submission in the fear of the Lord is not there right now, but it doesn't model Ephesians 4, walk it out in meekness and lowliness and long suffering, endeavoring to keep the bonds of peace of unity together. Why? With everyone knowing the common doctrine, the basic sound doctrine of the Bible, <laughs> which is one Lord, one faith, one baptism with God the Father of us all, and then reasoning every office minister pastor poet p prophet and apostle teacher evangelist is on the basic same page of common unity for the following reasons one to model the bride of christ it says in ephesians for the transformed community which is mutually submitted mutually in the fear of the lord to one another even in family and marriage that is what transforms and affects society and let me ask you this crazy dysfunctional society it needs transforming but the church is not helping it in fact it's blocking it it's it stopped it it caused it it causes it unless you're really careful I'm not word cursing I'm trying to stir it up I'm trying to shock it and awe it so it self improves really now in hindsight I wanted to make sure that when I'm teaching authority because I was raised under great authority look at back in Ephesians 5.21 that I believe in head of home, head of ministry, head of household, Adam and Eve type things where the man was made first so there's chain of command, not control, not waitresses, not less than chattel or possessions, but instead everyone's equal but in chain of command with God's calling to obey him. It wasn't until the fall that the law was set in and with the law comes criticism accusation and bias and demeaning mistreatment of women and men and anybody so i looked up as i've said many times chat gpt ai i said was the first church authoritarian or was it ephesians 521 mutual submission even the fear of the lord with even family and marriage everybody and it said it was and then it said i said when did authoritarians come on you better do it that's the authoritarian tone it said authoritarians and totalitarians were not in the first church, not Jesus, not the apostles. It was all 521 until the influences of Rome and Greece came in. The world, the tough world. God bless you. He love you. And peace. Peace be unto all your houses. God bless you.